Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is another Sunday under quarantine, but we can still pray together, so I invite you to join me now for a time of prayer. This is the third Sunday of Easter. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Join me. Inspire us, O Lord, as we come to worship. Draw us to yourself in prayers and praises, and help us to understand your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment to confess our sins to Almighty God, remembering those things that we have done and the things we have left undone in the past week. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are like lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord, Forgive those who confess their faults, as you promised, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance to remind us of our forgiveness in Christ. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll be reading from the Gospel according to Luke. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13 to 35. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some of our women, uh, some, of, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 28. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? And they rose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wanted to just share a few thoughts or a brief reflection on this passage. There will also be a sermon available uh, on the YouTube channel, and it's linked in the email you have received. So you can go to that as well at this point in our prayer time together. But here are some thoughts about the passage I've just read. A brief reflection. Two disciples are traveling on the road away from Jerusalem. Both disciples are unknown to us. We don't know who they are. And one of them is even unnamed. We know one is called Cleopas, but the other one we don't. And they are going to a place we know nothing about. As they travel, Jesus walks with them. And he comes alongside them as one who seems ignorant. He seems not to know. Jesus appears not to know what they are talking about. He doesn't seem to know about the things that have happened in Jerusalem during the time that we call Holy Week and Easter. While Jesus seems ignorant, these disciples seem to know. Yet in reality, it is they who are the ignorant ones. It is they who do not really know. They had followed Jesus in his ministry. They know his powerful words and works. They know what happened to Jesus in Jerusalem, how he was rejected and crucified. They even know the report that the tomb was empty. But in spite of all this, they do not really know. They have not yet believed. Even now, their eyes are kept from recognizing Jesus so that they might know it is him who walks with them. Although Jesus seems to be ignorant, he is the one who does know. He interprets to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Last Sunday, on the second Sunday of Easter, we looked at the passage about doubting Thomas in the Gospel of John. And we noted that the passage raises and then answers a question. Here's the question. How can those who do not see Jesus still believe in him? That's an important question for us because we didn't get the same opportunity the first disciples had. And John's answer to this question is that we believe through the testimony of Scripture, the, the word of the Bible. And that's so important. And I think Luke, the gospel writer Luke, would agree. But it's really interesting to me that here in, in this passage, where Jesus explains the Scriptures to them, he shows them how the Scriptures point to him, that it, it isn't in this moment that their eyes are opened. As Jesus explains the, the scriptures to them, later they say their hearts burned, but it's not in this moment that they come to know him. That happens later. Knowing Jesus, believing in him, having eyes that are open to see him, comes through fellowship. That's the lesson of this passage in Luke's Gospel. It is a moment of hospitality around a table with bread. They invited Jesus to be their guest, but Jesus becomes the host at the table. He takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them. And it's in that moment that their eyes are opened to know him. They recognize him. They say later, 
that he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they gathered together with him in fellowship, he was known to them. And I think this is an important word for us in these days, while we are not able to gather together. In this time of pandemic, we have worked hard to adapt so that we are able to worship from home. We're worshiping from home, we're praying from home, and following these different things on YouTube and social media. And someone might wonder, why would the church return to the way we used to do things when this is all over? Why would we go back to that time when we used to get together on a Sunday morning for worship? After these restrictions are ended, why should we start gathering together again? This passage gives us an answer. We need to come together in fellowship because in fellowship, we experience the presence of the risen Lord Jesus. Jesus is with us now. Absolutely. He's with us now at our homes. He's with us in our workplaces for those of us who are still able to go to work. He's with us wherever we are right now. But he is with us in fellowship in a way that he is not with us when we are by ourselves. In fellowship, as we come together, Jesus is present with his church, his body. So we need to come together. In these days of quarantine and lockdown, we look forward to the time when we will be able to come together again and experience the presence of Jesus in a way that we cannot experience it while we are by ourselves. So we look forward to it, and I believe that it won't be long. Amen. Let's continue in our prayers together by affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue in that same attitude of prayer. As we pray the Collect Prayer for the third Sunday of Easter. Please join me. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray and lift up our prayers for those who are in need around us, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Let's pray for those who are far away, our loved ones in distant places. Let's continue to pray for uh, governments around the world as they make decisions that affect our lives. Let's pray for hospital workers and healthcare workers around the world, doctors and those who are caring for the sick and those who are uh, seeking to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Let's keep them in prayer. As we pray, we pray to the one who is present with us, the risen Lord Jesus. He is in our midst. And we know him through scripture and in fellowship. Even now he's with us as we fellowship together uh, through social media, through YouTube. So I invite you to join me now and lift up your prayers with me for our world, for ourselves, and for the end of the spread of this disease. Let's pray. Lord God, you know our needs, even 
even better than we know our own needs. You know what we need before we ask you. Lord, just as you walked with your disciples in a moment of their sadness, we pray that you would make yourself known to us in this moment of sadness. We pray, Lord, that your presence would be real to us as we experience the discomfort and the suffering and um, the struggles of time in this pandemic, under lockdown and in quarantine. Lord, we pray that you would make yourself known to us um, through the means that are available to us as we read your word, as we pray, as we fellowship with those who are close by. We pray, Lord, that your presence would be with us. And Lord, we look forward to the day when we can come together again in worship and fellowship to enjoy your presence together so that you would be known to us in a special way when we can gather together again. We look forward to that day, Lord, and we pray that it would come soon. Lord, we continue to lift up our prayers for the world around us. We pray for the end of the spread of this disease. We pray for a vaccination, Lord, and we ask your blessing and protection and provision on all who are working to bring about an end to the pandemic. Lord, today we want to pray especially for those uh, who are suffering Uh, not only from the disease itself, but from uh, the crisis that is created by the lockdown and and the time in quarantine. But we know that many people are not working. Many people cannot provide for their families. And we pray, Lord, that you would provide for them. We thank you for the efforts of uh, the Rwandan government to provide food. Please, Lord, as uh, as we seek to love our neighbors, help us to provide for what they need as well. Uh, Thank you, Lord, that our church is doing that. Saint Etienne, Lord, we pray that um, you would increase and multiply those those food things that were given away. And Lord, help us as we're able to give to make that possible. We we continue to pray also, Lord, for for our lives at home. Uh, Lord, you know uh, the struggles that we face in work and school from from home and doing things from a distance. We pray that you would give us grace, Lord. Help us to be patient with ourselves and with our family members and those who are close by. Help us to do what we can to love and serve those who are near to us. We pray all this in the name of the risen Lord Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining me in this time of prayer, uh, for coming with me around the word of scripture and for um, this opportunity to speak to you, let's say together the grace, the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may God bless you richly in this time. In Jesus' name.